Hey, my sweet babies. Happy Tuesday. It's your girl, Taria. Thank you for watching another YouTube video for We Go Podcast, aka What Else Is Going On Podcast. You can find the audio version wherever you listen to your podcast, iTunes, Spotify, all that good stuff. Um, I missed y'all so much. I was like, oh my gosh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Mm, excuse me. I have not done any videos and I missed y'all. I had all intentions on cranking videos out. I had uh, stuff in my email drafts that I wanted to talk to y'all about. Then you know what they say about good intentions, child. The road to hell is paved with them. But I'm happy Mother's Day, belated Mother's Day to all who um, are mothers. For anyone who was celebrating a Mother's Day without your mom being here, um, my love goes out to you, um, sending you peace and love and all of that good stuff. Uh, my Mother's Day was good. I won't my son wasn't here. Um, he graduates from college this week in California. So I'm so excited to get out there and see him. But my youngest was here and my oldest daughter wasn't able to make it, but we'll all be in California. Um, but my mom and dad came down. Um, my one brother came, my other brother and his fiance moved to New Orleans over Christmas. He's normally here. He wasn't here, but I had a good time with my mom, my dad, the hubby, my youngest, uh, my girlfriend, her daughter, my brother. We really, it was, it was just a really nice time all being together, having fun, talking about different things. So Mother's Day was good. I missed y'all so much. Um, when I go out to California, I'm definitely going to be making videos. I actually think that'll give me even more time in a strange way. Cause I won't be running, ripping and running and running and running. I'm saying that now, at least that's what I think. Also, I will have some, the Summer House Martha's Vineyard latest episode um, recap out for y'all and the Jersey recap out for y'all. I'm aiming to get it out no later than tomorrow, definitely before the next episode. I was going to have a guest yesterday. I had set it up in my mind, right? Like I threw the date out there, but never officially confirmed. But um, this guest will definitely be coming on in the next two or so weeks. So let's get into this video right now and see what else is going on with these people. First off, let's talk a little RHOP. Speaking of RHOP, child, Miss NECA confirms what we already knew. Uh, in the words of Jamie, that's me. We knew, we knew, we knew. Uh, NECA Ahim confirms departure from the Real Housewives of Potomac after one season. This is a people exclusive. As a true resident, this is funny. <laughs> As a true resident of Potomac proper 20854, just know that I'll be seeing you all again soon. The Nigerian American lawyer tells people. I'm going to read that again. As a true resident of Potomac proper 20854, just know that I'll be seeing you all again soon. Nakia Ahim official, I mean, Nakia, Lord Jesus, Neka Ahim or Ahim officially won't be a part of the Real Housewives of Potomac's upcoming ninth season. The 36 year old lawyer and entrepreneur who famously boasted in her first episode, I come as I am and who I am, honey, is remarkable, is exiting the Bravo reality series after one season, becoming the third cast member to depart the show since season eight wrapped. I will not be returning for season nine of RHOP, she tells people in an exclusive statement amid rumors of her departure. Her exit comes as the Potomac resident continues as her journey to continues on her journey to have a child. At this point, after multiple failed fertility procedures, I have decided to make expanding my family my ultimate priority, NECA says. Thank you to the fans that have supported me along the way this season, especially regarding my difficult IUI turned IVF journey and the stigma surrounding infertility. All of the kind remarks have genuinely kept me uplifted and have fueled my determination to continue to share my story. She goes on to express her sincere appreciation to Bravo and truly original for the opportunity and notes that she has built lifetime friendships with some incredible women through this experience. And then again, at the end, as a, res as a true resident of Potomac proper, 20854, just know that I'll be seeing you all again soon. We knew it. We knew you wouldn't come back, child. I bet you, I, have you ever done something and you could literally just like throw yourself to the ground and scream like, Lord, give me a chance to redo time. Like, Reverse time so I could just do this one thing differently. Please. You ever had that in your mind sometimes? Think, man, if I could just redo this. 
I guarantee you NECA is wishing that it was last season filming all over again because I bet you she would do a lot of things differently. Listen, we're not surprised to see her go. It wouldn't have bothered me if she came back because I felt like she wasn't, although her and the Wendy beef did put her kind of center stage, if you will, maybe that's the wrong word for a little bit. She wasn't really interesting to me. You know, I would have liked to have seen more, uh, but I guess we will not be getting the opportunity to see that. But I, I think that she's probably kicking herself like she should have came in differently. Um, but who knows, may maybe these lifelong friendships, maybe she has truly formed these lifelong friendships. We'll see. Either way, child, we already know. Speaking of Potomac, according to TV Deets, exclusive RHOP season nine filming T, everyone versus Giselle Bryant. Things have officially kicked off during RHOP season nine filming with Giselle Bryant taking on the rest of the housewives after kicking them out of her event, sources tell TV Deets exclusively. On Friday night, May 10th, Giselle Bryant and Ashley Darby held a GNA event in honor of Giselle's father. Oh, they're actually doing GNA for real? I like thought they brought it up last season, something to talk about, gave them a story, threw the little website up um, with a little Canva, and then we weren't going to hear about it. But it's real like that. Okay. Well, they threw a GNA event in honor of Giselle's father with the money raised going to the National Brain Tumor Society. That's really nice. Um, like that's that's an a great oh child lord jesus wait i'm sorry y'all hold on uh-uh uh y'all i just knew i had all my alarms turned off okay um i do think that is a great thing to do anytime you're raising money for um things like that um that same night karen huger was also being recognized with an award at a separate event leaving the rest of the housewives to balance two filmed events on the same night. Depending on how you look at it, things didn't go well for Giselle as she allegedly became upset with the group at large for choosing to attend Karen's award ceremony first. According to my rock solid boots on the ground sources, I'm sorry, according to my rock solid boots on the ground sources, the OG housewife kicked out her co-stars just minutes after they arrived at her event, sending Mia Thornton, Stacey Roosh or Rush and Jossie Rideau back outside and into their waiting sprinter van. While there have been multiple other conflicts captured by Bravo cameras in the first few weeks of filming, I'm hearing that Giselle Bryant is a big part of the ongoing conversation amongst the women and that she hasn't exactly made the best impression with the new cast members. With Robin Dixon out of the mix this season, it's possible Giselle's having a tough time adjusting, but now that she is feuding with most of her co-stars, some insiders are worried about how she is navigating this new and improved group. Who's worried? Okay, some, some insiders in my bed. She had second chair last year and it might be third chair this year, one source close to the show shared. As previously reported on tvdeets.com, RHOP is currently in production on season nine, with Giselle returning as a full-time housewife alongside Karen Huger, Wendy Osefo, Ashley Darby, and Mia Thornton. Former QVC co-host Stacey Roosh is joining Rush as full-time housewife, um, Stacey Rush as a full-time housewife with the new season also featuring Kiana Stewart, Jacqueline Blake, and newbie Jossie Rideau. Oh, so Jacqueline will be in the mix. That's interesting. Look, they say everybody has their season, right? Everyone has a story and everyone has a season and it just might be hers. I'm not mad about it. Moving on from that. Um, I'm sorry, let me go back. In the words of Monique, though, I would like to see it. You know what? Let me take that back. Because I don't wish for anyone's downfall. What I do wish is that she is met with the same type of energy that she gives to different stories and things in the press. I hope that she's met with that same energy. No one backed down from her. And, um, because I don't, we don't know how many more calls to HR she could make, you know, to tell the people to settle down like she did Candace. So, um, yeah, I just hope, you know what? I hope that everybody shows up as their true, authentic selves and doesn't back down from being their true, authentic selves just because 
it's an OG that they may be in conflict with. I don't want them coming in intentionally creating conflict. Whether I care for the cast member or not, I don't want any fake phony. Like, don't come in with your mindset, oh, I'm going after Giselle or I'm going after Ashley or I'm going after Mia. Come in authentically. And if there's an authentic beef, then I want you to stand 10 toes down in it and keep feet on necks. There we go. Um, let's get into another branch of the Housewives, the Real Housewives of New York. Well, former Real Housewives of New York. So let's get into Leah McSweeney. So we do know that Andy was under investigation and Bravo has investigated him and has cleared him. Now I will say this. It's interesting. When you do your own in-house investigation, I'm not saying that you're, that it's always going to, you're always going to be cleared. Let's just say I'm not shocked that he was cleared. Right. But so we know that he was cleared of all the allegations against him. So now Leah McSweeney's lawyer questions Bravo investigation clearing Andy Cohen. After Bravo boss Andy Cohen was cleared by the network for allegations, including promoting drug use, former reality star Leah McSweeney's lawyers are calling into question the legitimacy of the probe and saying they were never contacted by investigators. They further claim Bravo is just using Cohen's being cleared as a convenient party line time to its upfront presentations. They have the upfronts for advertisers when networks promote their bus buzziest titles. I'm going to go to an upfront. Do I? Are they fun? I wonder. Anyway, Bravo stated this week that the outside investigation into the recent allegations made by Brandy Glanville and Leah McSweeney against Andy Cohen has now been completed and the claims were found to be unsubstantiated. McLeaney's uh, lawyers aren't buying it. How do you have an investigation without speaking to anyone? As far as we know, no one ever contacted our firm, her lawyer Gary Alderman said in a statement. Our opinion is that no one is going to believe this was a real investigation. This is perfect timing. One line so they can repeat it to all the advertisers at the upfront. He added, we look forward to reviewing all of the interviews, evidence, and final reports of the investigation that NBCU conducted when we receive them during the discovery phase of the lawsuit. So that's interesting to me. Remember, so there was a, a person behind the scenes production that filed a suit that filed something against Ramona. Um, and Ebony had also filed something like basically like backing the producer and, and Ebony filed her own uh, claims and Bravo did an investigation and didn't contact and interview the people. Like for instance, there was a, there was a, um, uh, I have it on my Instagram, but basically there was like a, um, something was supposedly said, something Ramona supposedly said something that made one of the black uh, production team uncomfortable. And instead of interviewing everyone, they did not interview everyone that was on set that day. They interviewed certain people. Ramona's friends, but they didn't interview Heather Thompson, who was on set. Um, so how could, so I get, even though Leah is, I do get what Leah's lawyer is saying. How do you do an investigation and not do interview? So if this person was there during the time and this person was there, how are you not contacting these people? So based on what I learned about the things that were filed against Ramona to HR and Bravo's investigation. It makes me feel like, yeah, how can you, how can you investigate claims about Andy, but not be interviewing people involved in these situations? You know what I mean? Like, what does that investigation then look like? I don't know. Again, not saying that he did or did not do it, but, and I know how I feel about Leah, but her lawyer does make sense. How does an investigation happen? What are you investigating? Who are you talking to? So, and it is interesting timing with the upfronts coming, I guess maybe saying this, I hope it doesn't get me. Um, I was going to say my invitation rescinded, but I was not invited. So, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Y'all get what I'm saying. How was the investigation? I would be interested in knowing how the investigation was conducted. I'll just say that. So I do get her. 
to a point, well, get the lawyer to a point about this. So we'll see, because you know the lawyer, um, when they get, they, if, if they're able to review all the interviews and evidence and final reports, you know they're going to be right down here to page six, letting us know what happened. Moving on, let's talk about Auntie Wendy. Man, this, this just made me so sad when I read it. It, it really did. According to RadarOnline.com, going, going, gone. Wendy Williams, 4.5 million NYC penthouse sold by court-ordered guardian after dementia diagnosis. Wendy Williams' beloved New York City penthouse has been sold off by her court-appointed guardian with the ex-talk show host taking a loss. 59-year-old Williams' three-bedroom, three-bathroom property has been offloaded for $3.75 million marking it $822,000 less than the $4.5 million she purchased it for in July 2021. She bought her house for $4.5 million July of 2021. They took almost a million dollars less. And to me, with the way the market is now, like even the house, my home that we bought in 2021, if I were to sell it now, it's valued at more than what we paid for it. So like for it, for, for them to take an almost million dollar loss, why the rush? Let me get through the article before, because I was getting ready to go into some things. The post broke the story on Monday. Wendy's dream has always been to live in Manhattan in a dream apartment, but never got a chance to do so. It is a very unfortunate situation. This comes three months after it was revealed. Williams had been diagnosed with front temporal dementia and the language disorder aphasia. The former Wendy Williams show host has been battling a series of health issues in the last few years, forcing her, forcing her career to come to an end in June of 2022. Over the past few years, questions have been raised at times about Wendy's ability to process information, and many have speculated about Wendy's condition, particularly when she began to lose words, act erratically at times, and have difficulty understanding financial transactions, Williams' team announced in a statement in February. Despite the diagnosis, Wendy's, Wendy is still able to do many things for herself. Her team continued. Most importantly, she maintains her trademark sense of humor and is receiving the care she requires to make sure she is protected and that her needs are addressed. Wendy was valued at $60 million. $60 million. Even if that was not all cash. It wasn't all liquid. She has been under a conservatorship for two years. You mean to tell me that the money that she had has been blown through under the conservatorship so quickly that they had to sell her condo in such a rush to take a almost million dollar loss? Where is her money? You know, people were quick to say, oh, Kevin Jr., was trying to run through her money. They were trying to get her money. And now here we are two years into a conservatorship, her having to sell her penthouse. Well, the conservator saying she had to sell the penthouse. I wonder how much money the conservator made on the sale because I do believe they make money on the sale. I've said it here before and I'll say it again. Jamie, that's me, did a breakdown of conservatorships and the judge a specific judge that puts conservatorships in place. And this particular judge is the one that appointed, I believe, uh, Sabrina Morrissey, which is Wendy's conservator. And let me tell you, something in the milk is not clean at all. Um, so I encourage you to check out Jamie That's Me's channel and search uh, her videos for uh, conservatorship. It was eye-opening and it just really made me see things even clearer in Wendy's case with this conservatorship again. You're taking an almost million dollar loss. You couldn't put it on the market and wait to see if it got even more than that. Why are you in such a rush to sell her home? But that has happened before. Conservatives will come in, take over. People don't even know their homes have been sold. And there was no reason for the homes to be sold. They'll say it's because of the money. What is the conservator being paid? Again, where is Wendy's money going we know that Sabrina Morrissey just went um, at a hearing, I believe, with Kevin. And the judge had ordered her 
to turn over some financial paperwork to him. My heart, Wendy has worked so hard her entire career. And again, she was a part of the percentage of people that was fortunate enough to do what she loved and make good money doing what she loved to do. And now here, after all of her hard work, that woman should have been able to have her dream of living in a penthouse in Manhattan. You know? It's just so sad. And it, it's just so sad. Like, I don't even really have words. Like, I, I just, my heart for her, knowing how hard she worked. And now you got this, a person can just literally be appointed, come in and just basically strip you, saying they're doing what's best, strip you of your family. Remember, she was crying for her family in the documentary, strip you of your family, your money, your freedoms, all of it. It's just sick. And I truly pray that if, because there, I guess there's a small chance that things are on the up and up. I personally don't believe it. I'll just be honest. I don't believe things are on the up and up with this conservator. But I pray that it all comes to light. All light. And she goes to jail, the whole team, whoever had something to do with it, the judge that put it in place, if she's knowingly putting people um, in, oh, in conservatorship positions, because uh, this particular judge is known to grant conservators conservatorships to lawyers that have donated to her campaign for something. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. Um, I just, man, all of that money just ran through. And the thing is, Wendy is still here. It's not like Wendy, child, it's raining. It literally was just sunny outside and now it's raining. Okay, I'm sorry, that kind of threw me because I thought I heard something dripping. I was like, I know nothing in my house dripping. Wow, but anyway, Wendy is still here. She still has life to live. She still has to be taken care of. So if you can drain her within two years and now you got to sell this penthouse and take that at a loss, how is she going to be taken care of going forward? Where are those funds coming from? I don't know. Again, my prayers and, and everything just goes out to Wendy and her family. They need to, oof. Anyway, um, what did Wendy's mom say? We rain Holy Ghost fire on the conservator, Sabrina Morrissey. Y'all, let's talk about uh, Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie. So I had wanted to talk to y'all about this last week when I first saw it. Simple Life duo Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie gearing up for reality TV return. That's hot. Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie are reportedly gearing up for a return to reality TV, stirring up excitement among fans of the dynamic duo from their 2000s hit, The Simple Life. While specifics remain under wraps, RadarOnline.com has learned that the new collaboration will bring the pair back to the small screen under a different show title with a new premise. Production sources confirmed to TMZ that Hilton 43 and Richie 42 will lead the cast but noted the project was still in its early stages and filming had not yet begun. An official announcement was in the works, they said. The pair allegedly came up with their vision for the show after months of brainstorming and quickly sold the idea to a streaming service. The news of their reality resurgence sparked a fierce bidding war among producers and distributors, but ultimately James Corden's company, Fullwell, secured the rights to the show. Hilton and Richie signaled at the reunion on Wednesday, with matching social media posts that featured throwback photos celebrating their decades-long friendship. Hilton hit the like button on a comment from a fan that read, all I need is a simple life reunion. Now, what's interesting, so I saw that, like, oh, okay, they're coming back to TV. Then we saw that it looked like they could be a part of season three of The Traitors. Well, then I went to just Jared and he says the Trader season three cast update. Peacock confirms those 12 celebrities are not competing this season. A report about the Trader season three cast is circulating, but it's not true. Earlier today, which was yesterday, The Sun shared that Nicole Richie, Paris Hilton, 
Jax Taylor, Teresa Giudice, Kenya Moore, Joe Mangiello, is that how you say it? Mangianello, Howie Mandel, Javier Poza, Matt Eisman, Kristen Kish, Holly Robinson, Pete, and her husband Rodney would all be competing on the upcoming third season of the fan favorite reality competition series. However, Peacock confirmed to Just Jarrett that this is not, in caps, the cast. At the NBC Universal Upfront presentation today, May 13th. Oh, they already had the upfronts. So I guess I'm not going. Okay. A comedic traders theme video was shown, and this apparently caused some confusion. We've confirmed that unfortunately, though, it would be epic. Let me go back. At the NBC Universal Upfront presentation today, which was actually yesterday, May 13th, a comedic traders theme video was shown, and this apparently caused some confusion. We've confirmed that unfortunately, though, unfortunately, though it would be epic, this group will not be traveling to Scotland for the new season of the Alan Cumming led series. Journalist Sharon Tharp confirmed the news as well. And while Peacock didn't share any additional details, she did tweet. The cast for hashtag the Traders US season season three does leave this month to film. So we can probably expect a cast announcement soon. So they're saying that this cast won't be filming. I wonder if it's this cast plus two more people that aren't named. So then they can say, well, we said this cast, you know, but I thought that was interesting that Nicole and Paris um, it's per radar online. They're coming back to TV. And that article from radar online read as though Nicole and Paris would be leading the cast. But then we hear comes out yesterday. Oh, they're going to be on traders. Now just Jared is saying, that they've confirmed, nope, this is not the cast. So who knows, they could still be going on traitors, um, but they're wording it in a way like this cast is not filming. So if they if they throw, if they were to add two more people, then it is technically a different cast. So we'll see. But I just thought that that was interesting. Are y'all interested in seeing Nicole and Paris back on TV? And if so, would you want to see them in a show more like Traders or in a show more like The Simple Life or even not The Valley, if y'all are watching The Valley, but a Valley-esque type show? Or do y'all just want to see them back on TV in general as long as they're together or not see them? Y'all let me know what y'all think. Um, all right. Also, let me know what y'all think about well, um, Auntie Wendy and this conservatorship and them selling her penthouse, taking almost a million dollars less than what she paid for it just two years ago. Let me know what y'all think about what Leah McSweeney's lawyer said, how about Andy's being cleared of an investigation, but how is there an investigation if seemingly no investigation has been done? Um, let me know what y'all think about RHOP and this being Giselle's. It seems like they're trying to say this is Giselle's not takedown season, but I guess it's going to be Giselle against the cast. Now, what's interesting does, is Ashley included in that cast. Meaning, you know how Ashley likes to play on both sides of the fence sometimes. So I wonder if she will do that um, with her GNA partner. And y'all don't got to let me know what y'all think about NECA leaving because we've already discussed this because we've been new that she was leaving. All right, y'all. I love y'all so much. Again, I will have the Summer House Martha's Vineyard recap and the Real, Housewife of new Real Housewives of New Jersey recap to you by tomorrow. I love y'all. And hopefully I'll be back today with another video for y'all. No, I will be back today with another video from y'all. Love y'all so much. I want to say again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Looking at my analytics and I try not to get too caught up in that kind of stuff, but I mean, to a certain point, you do want to see where you're growing, you know, this, that, and the third. And I just can't thank y'all enough. I appreciate y'all so much. I do not take your view for granted. I do not take your like for granted. I do not take you subscribing for granted. So please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And also, come on over to Instagram at Wego Podcast, W-E-I-G-O Podcast. Follow me over there. Um, and we can do all the things. We can talk, laugh, have a good kiki. Again, I love y'all so much. And I will talk to y'all later today. See ya.